recap so far, group one that we looked at was a rational function where the degree was always bigger in the numerator. And one thing we noticed in all of these is there was no horizontal asymptotes. Sometimes there was diagonal asymptotes, sometimes there were holes. Group two, we looked at when you had the same degree on the top and bottom. And group two always had a horizontal asymptote. And we were talking about that horizontal asymptote. If you just looked at the highest degree, which happens to be the same on the top and the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote will always be at those coefficients. And the idea of a horizontal asymptote is it's looking at what happens as x goes to infinity or to negative infinity. And as x gets really, really big, only the highest power is really going to affect it. Because if you put in a big number and you add 3 to it, it's not really a big deal anymore, right? A billion plus 3, if they say, well, how much money have you? Please, I have a billion dollars. You'd be like, no, I have a billion dollars and three dollars and 27 cents. They'd be like, that detail, I don't need to know that detail. But if you only had three dollars and 27 cents, that last penny is somewhat significant, right? But at a billion dollars, an extra three dollars doesn't make sense. So the idea is we can only, we only need to look at that highest power because once the nuns get high, all of these other smaller degrees are kind of insignificant. And then group three, we're now going to look at what happens when there's a bigger degree on the bottom of the fraction. So again, hopefully you've done these already. Some interesting things that happens, and this is sort of what makes this unit somewhat unique, is the ideas stay the same, but depending on the functions, the graphs can look completely different. So unlike a logarithmic question, where you know the basic shape of a log graph, and it doesn't change, these graphs can look like a whole bunch of different things, but the rules don't change when we get to how do we graph them. So one thing we're going to notice in this group is that if the degree is bigger on the bottom, there's a horizontal asymptote, and it's always at y equals 0. So on each of these, we can take out our red pen and draw that horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And we have two more of them underneath as well. So each of these has a horizontal asymptote at 0. Each of these, if we can, we should try to factor. This one, you can factor out an x, and it leaves it as 2 over x. Right, because we can think of 2x squared as 2x times x times x, and one of those x's would cancel out. Now, usually, so what's interesting about that one, usually when a non-permissible value cancels out, we get a whole. However, in this case, the non-permissible value is zero that cancels out, but we are still left with zero as a non-permissible value. So because the zero is still left as a non-permissible value, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Can you see, in this one, your denominator is always positive. 
x squared is a positive number, and then you add 1 to it, for sure it will always be positive. Since it's always positive on the log, there are no non-permissible values. Nothing you can put in for x in the real numbers will give you 0 in your denominator. So this one has no non-permissible value. What's also interesting in this one is that there is an x-intercept at 0, 0, which is really weird because you have a horizontal asymptote, but your graph goes through it. So this is a major difference between horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes represent non-permissible values. Your graph never goes through it because that value is not allowed. Horizontal asymptotes are just telling you what happens at the extremes. In the middle, like it does in this one, your graph could go through. So again, these graphs can look different depending on just the numbers that are given, but we're going to find out the process for making these is always the same. So again, in this one, I want you to note that your denominator is always positive. That's why that one has no non-permissible values. For me personally, I like to take an extra step. If my x squared is negative, I like to just factor that negative out in front. I find that makes factoring easier when the x squared is positive. So this one's going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. So we have two vertical asymptotes, because there would be two non-permissible values. And finally, this last one. has a non-permissible value at x equals 0. So, so far we've seen 13 different graphs, and they all look quite a bit different. So this is not going to be something where you're like, oh, rational graph, I know what it looks like. It's going to be like, rational graph, I'm going to have to think about this and figure out some properties to find out what it looks like.